Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q-Blast. I am, again, Dr. Jason Fernasiak here with you this week with a new clinical vignette. With this clinical vignette, we're going to go over the right and wrong answers and high-yield points to increase your scores on the boards and help you take better care of patients on the wards. Without further ado, let's jump right in. A 23-year-old woman comes to the physician because she has never had a menstrual period. Physical examination shows absent pubic and axillary hair, normal breasts, and no palpable uterus. A karyotype shows 46XY. Surgical resection of gonadal structures is performed. An examination of soft tissue obtained shows seminiferous tubules with normal Leydig cells. Which of the following sets of laboratory findings in serum was most likely in this patient prior to surgery? Was it A, high testosterone and a high LH? B, high testosterone and a low LH? C, low testosterone and a high LH? D, low testosterone and a low LH? Or E, normal testosterone and normal LH? The answer here is A, high testosterone and high LH. As you might have guessed from the clinical presentation and the karyotype, we are dealing with androgen insensitivity syndrome. This is a high yield topic for the boards. You may not see it very commonly on the wards, but it's easy to ask questions about and there is known pathophysiology. Questions are easy to come by for this and you will see this when you're taking your practice test and may see it on the actual day of the test. Let's review. It's a genotypic male with an abnormality of the androgen receptor. They lack response to testosterone during the fetal period, which results in female external genitalia. Aromatization of testosterone leads to the normal breast development, which was seen in our patient. Androgen receptors in the hypothalamic and pituitary tissue is also defective, and thus the testosterone that normally suppresses the pituitary gonadotropes doesn't, and LH is also going to be elevated. We are not gonna see that suppression, so you have high testosterone, high LH. That high LH results in that high testosterone, which is produced by the Leydig cells of the testes. Our high yield takeaways come, to the end, come back to the endocrine feedback systems at work here. Testosterone and luteinizing hormone levels can help distinguish between different causes of abnormal sexual development and it will be important to have a firm understanding on the boards and on the wards about the different connections between this feedback loop. If you have high testosterone and high LH, it likely means you're dealing with a defective androgen receptor. There is no feedback going on. There is high testosterone and a low LH, it means feedback is working and there is probably a testosterone secreting tumor because LH is not inducing that testosterone. If you have low testosterone and a high LH, you have primary hypogonadism. The gonad is not working, although the pituitary is trying to tell it to work hard. If you have low testosterone and low LH, you have hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. That means that the gonad isn't working, but neither is the hypothalamus and pituitary. It's not telling the gonad to work. These are very key points and very high yield topics and concepts for the boards and the wards. This has been this week's clinical vignette and I'm Dr. Jason Fernasiak. We're going to see you next week with another vignette. Take care.